We are finally through with the theoretical basics of VL. So far we got to know the interface, the most common data types, their conversion methods, learned about a few nodes and it's time to put all of this into practice by entering the world of three-dimensional rendering with VL Stride. Stride is actually an open source game engine for .NET and integrated into VVVV as VL nodes. During this tutorial we will explore the rendering pipeline of Stride and build a scene with this rotating box inside a bubble randomly positioning itself in 3D space. To use Stride in a new project you first need to set a reference to VL Stride in your document. Afterwards it is shown as a category in the node browser giving you access to the whole node set consisting of materials, lights, cameras, models and we are going to start by placing a node called scene window. This will open a window on your screen in which you can render your 3D scene into. And for doing so, you also need the root scene node, which is the entry point to your scene that combines all elements you want to render. Afterwards, we can select the primitive from the models category, in this case a simple box, and connect it to the root scene. You might notice that nothing happens. This is because we need to set a light in the scene. And for this purpose, we can browse into the lights category and select one of these nodes. In our case, we will be using the directional light, which will illuminate the scene from one angle. Now that you can see something in the window, try navigating the camera with the mouse. You can look around while holding the left mouse button, zoom while holding the right mouse button, and pan the camera with the middle mouse button. To reset the camera to its initial position, simply press and hold R on your keyboard. Next, we are going to bring some color into the scene, and the background can be easily set by the clear color input pin on the scene window. To define a color for the box, we need a material from the respective category, and we will pick a PBR material here. PBR stands for Physical Based Rendering, and will simulate real-life lighting on your objects depending on the lights that you have set into your scene. On the PBR material, you can expose and set the material color, and also set two other input pins called Roughness and Metalness, which I will leave at their default values for now. If you want to learn more about these properties, I'd like to point you to an official video from the developers, which is linked in the video description. Another important pin on the primitive is the transformation input that we can use to set the size and position of the object in the scene. Simply connect the transform SRT node from the 3D category. It has input pins of the type Vector3, which apply the scale, rotation and translation of the box along the X, Y and Z axis. And we can use an LFO here to continuously rotate the object. As we have already seen in the past video, we need to make a type conversion here, because the LFO outputs a single float, while the transform SRT expects a Vector3 on the rotation input. So we need a Vector3 join node and send the output of the LFO in one of the inputs. We can also apply the rotation to a second axis to create a more interesting motion of the box. You might have noticed that we're suddenly dealing with a lot more data types, as mentioned at the end of the last video. So we are not only using floats, colors or vectors anymore, but also connected a lot of so-called entities, for example the box or the light, sent a type called matrix into the transformation pin, or a dedicated material data type into the material input pin of the box. This might seem overwhelming at first, but notice how we almost by intuition connected the material or the transformation to the matching pins, as VL always highlights the pins of nodes that can be connected once we start a link. This applies to any data type in VL, which helps a lot while patching. So when we start dragging a link from one of these complex data types, we immediately see where they can be connected. In order to show multiple entities in the rendering, for example, if we now want to surround this box with a transparent sphere, we need to group both entities with a group node before sending them into the root scene. We also need to set a bigger radius for the sphere and increase the tessellation value a bit, which controls the resolution of the mesh and makes the surface of the sphere rounder. Finally, we can create another material, set it to a color, 
And this time we need to use the transparency feature, which you can enable when connecting a blend node from the transparency category with the corresponding pin of the material. Afterwards, the alpha of the material can be set and you can see the rotating box through the sphere. The group node also has a transformation input, so if we want to apply the same transformation to multiple objects, we could either send it into all of them or simply apply the transformation to the whole group. Afterwards, the translation of the transform SRT node is applied to both entities at the same time. By the way, the group has a pin group, so if you want to group more than two entities, you can easily extend the inputs of the node using Ctrl and Plus. As the next step, we want to use this translation to periodically reposition both the box and the sphere in 3D space. So let's say we want to generate a random position every second and animate to it. For this purpose, VL offers the random node, which constantly generates a random value in a given range. As it is adaptive, we can use it for multiple data types. So we can, for example, generate random integers, floats, colors. But in this case, we will be using it to generate random vector 3 positions between minus 1 and 1. Random is a great way to visualize that the runtime of VVVV is constantly evaluating, by default with 60 frames per second. So what you see here on the output is a real-time value that is generated on every frame of the runtime kept between the two values provided on the inputs of the node. To keep a random number, we have to use a node called sample and hold, which will store the ingoing value whenever the right input is true. You can imagine this node like a gate that opens every time the right input is triggered by a bang. Like this, it is now easy to generate a random value periodically once we connect the on-new cycle output of the LFO to the sample input. Afterwards, the output of the sample and hold node can be connected to the translation input and we see the objects jumping around in the scene. Finally, I'd like to introduce you to a very practical node that you can throw in anywhere in your patches when you want to apply smooth transitions between values. This node called Filter is also adaptive and can be used for any number or color, so we can simply put it in between the sample and hold and the translation input. Afterwards, you see the objects animating to the new position. On the other inputs, you can set the speed of the transition and also the behavior of the filter node using the transition and mode inputs. What we have built in this video is the basic rendering pipeline of Stride and you can open help patches for all of its components to learn more about them and their variations. For example, the light, the primitive or the material. Please make sure to save this patch, because in the last chapter of this series, we will be extending it with simple interactions using the mouse. In the next video, I will introduce you to the topic of spreads in VL, which are basically lists that contain multiple values of a specific data type and how to use them in combination with loops.